Welcome back, DIYers. You ever found yourself buying a new tool, or in my case, three new ones, and then find yourself looking around the house for any project you could find just so you can get to use them? Well, that's exactly what I did. And the project I found was repairing and repainting my garage door trim. Now, if this is the first time you've been to the channel, I'm working on trying to get the exterior of my house painted. And it's taken just a wee bit longer than I wanted it to. So I just wanted to get some paint on something to show that I was making progress. So the tools I bought were a Fuji Mini Mite 5, a DeWalt, of course, cordless random orbital sander, and multi-tool. And I'll have affiliate links down below to these tools and some other ones. And of course, a link to my Etsy store for DIY apparel. So what do you say we stop all this yammering and get to work opening them tools up and using them? Let's go. Go back through with 80 grits and resand all the trim around the garage, each side and the top and on the inside um, and kind of get it back down to a nice smooth surface. Only this time, because this works so well, for which I really love this, um, I'm going to sand a lot of the paint off. I'm gonna get it down to a lot of bare wood. And then I'm gonna go just like I did in the uh, Fixing the Butt Joint series. Again, link down below, you can go watch that. I'm gonna paint uh, the areas that need to be caulked. I'm gonna primer them and then paint them and then come back, caulk them, and then I'll primer all of it and paint it as one uh, final uh, coat. I've already kind of started sanding up here. And that gouge right there, I've taken the uh, caulking that was in there out, and I'll sand this and redo it. But like right in here, and especially right in here, can you see, it kind of looks like it's black and showing through. And the other thing is, when I first sanded it, while it looks good, when you feel it, it's still kind of rough. So this time when I go through, I'll sand smooth that up a lot better. And so we'll resand this. I'm gonna sand some of this edge here, but I'm not gonna sand, I gotta be careful because this is my good caulking and I don't wanna damage that. So I got another little tool surprise I'm gonna bring out and see if it'll help me get a little closer there. But I'm gonna go up over here. See that, those red spots shining through? Those weren't there before. See how dark that is in areas along here? And to me, it looks like it's trying to mold. So I'm gonna sand all of this. I'm gonna sand inside here. This looks pretty good, but I'm just gonna resand it, touch it up. I've already done over here. You can see I took all the paint off of this. It did really well. And a lot of the paint's off of this. This is already pretty much done. All I gotta do is go back with 180. I'm gonna start with 80 and get it all done. Then I'm gonna come back with 180 and smooth it up. And I've already done inside of this. The only thing that my orbital sander won't get is right in here. So I'm gonna have to scrape that with a scraper and hand sand it. Because uh, the other tool that I just bought uh, which I'm going to debut today. I don't think it'll get in there, but it will get up here. So before I get started, I'm going to hang some plastic around here and kind of make it a, a barrier uh, to keep the dust and dirt from going in also, because I'm sure this ain't going to get 100% of it with the shop vac. I'm still going to have some debris blow in there, and I just soon try and keep as much out as I can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this six mil plastic here uh, and just some contractor two inch tape or inch and a half uh, tape and put up across here and uh, bury this off and then we'll get started sanding. This here is 10 foot by 25 foot so that'll definitely be plenty to hit to the ground. I'm going to try and tape it kind of like that and go around here and then over to the other side. So I'm going to lay this out. Okay, I've got the sanding done with the 80 grit. You can see I've got a lot of bare wood showing now. And I will tell you, even though that sander's lighter than the other stuff I was using, it still gets heavy when holding it upside down to get this underneath side. As you can see, I've got all this sanded up smooth with the 80 grit. I got my little plastic barrier up there so the sawdust doesn't go in there and I'm also going to use it for when I spray this 
That way I don't spray inside the garage. Now I'll get the 180 grit and kind of go over it real easy and quick. Try and smooth out the 80 grit. Got my 180 on here, my five amp battery, and let's go. Earlier in the video, if you remember when I was sanding, I said later on I'd have a surprise. Well, here's the surprise. I got this brand new uh, DeWalt, of course, because I, I said earlier I like DeWalt tools. Uh, oscillating multi-tool. Let's open this up. Comes in a nice handy bag. Part of the reason I got it. And it too is battery operated. It also came with some sanding pads, a charger, and a 2 amp hour battery. Now I have to tell you, these 2 amp hour batteries, while they're lightweight and they're nice, they don't hold the charge near as long as that 5 amp, which makes it kind of nice because I burnt through two of these 2 amp batteries pretty quick using that sander. But we'll put it on here, get it charged, get started. Alright, so I got this for a number of reasons, but one was for its sanding ability. And I got it came with sandpaper, it came with uh, 60 grit, 120, and 240. So I'm going to take the 120 and I'm going to get up here in these corners and these edges that I couldn't get down along this side. Most of all, I'm going to see if it'll allow me to sand this beveled edge down here. And if so, it's going to be really nice. So. Let's see how it works. It's allowing me to get right along that edge without hitting that caulking and peeling it off. Let's see how it does here. Very nice. Now, a real trick. Let's see how it does down here. Well, it's not gonna let me get very much in there, but I'll give it a try anyway. like I'll have to do that by hand but I think it's gonna work great for the rest of this so let's get all this done and we can get one step closer to primering what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this little brush here and just plain water kind of rinse it down wipe it down uh, to get all the dust and stuff off I'll come back behind with a towel and dry it I'll let it set for about 20 or 30 minutes while I do some masking and then we'll put on the primer Okay, I got my masking done. You can kind of see there. All along the top. All the way down. And the reason I mask this all off is for when I primer, I don't want primer all over here or on other stuff. Uh, and I'll leave this tape too when I'm done doing this primer and I'll use uh, a tape with paper to cover this for when I spray it. You can see it's all dry, sanded, smooth and dry, no residue anywhere. Got that taped up there. I'm gonna peel bond that. I'm basically gonna peel bond primer, all these insides, these corners, probably do there. Any nails that are exposed like this, Put some peel bond over that and any areas i got some areas up here that the paint looks like it might want to peel so i'll put it on there to hold it down now unfortunately with this peel bond primer i've got to wait 24 hours before i can paint over it so we'll get this done and let it sit got the peel bond primer here from sherwin williams got my one inch purdy brush and away we go So I'm going to go around, 
do all this and then tomorrow come back behind and all these paces I put primer on put paint over caulk that'll have to set up for a couple hours probably before we can paint over it in the meantime I'll get everything taped off we'll spray the primer and then the paint so now we're ready to paint and when I say paint I'm just painting over the areas that are going to get caulked. So like I've got some primer I put right here, but I'm not going to paint that right now because that's not going to get any caulking. Like over these nail holes and around here, there's a crack around this side that I'm going to do. Um, now I primered down all of these um, corners here and along here and up here. And the reason I did that is while yes, I sanded it and it was real smooth, I wanted to make sure that none of that paint peeled up. Okay, I got my Sherwin-Williams duration uh, paint here. And All right, next thing I'm gonna do while that paint dries is you see this board here. It doesn't touch the ground here, but when it gets back to here, it touched the concrete. On the other side, it's well above. So I'm going to take my new little oscillating tool and I'm gonna cut that so that nothing is touching this concrete. While this is pressure treated wood and it's good for uh, you know, ground contact, I want that open so water can drain and this thing doesn't wick any water up. So I'll get my little tool, I'll make a little line where I need to cut and we'll cut that off. All right, if you can see there, I got a little black line that I drew. I'm gonna take my handy dandy little saw here, oscillating tool and cut right along there. All right, there it is, all done. Cut a little piece right here. Nice and pretty. Now when water gets there, it'll run out from under there and I ain't gotta worry about it. On to the next step. Okay, today we've got to tape off all along here because we're going to caulk. Now I'm going to caulk here. I'm also going to caulk right along where this drywall meets. As you can see, it's peeled off and the uh, drywall mud and stuff has come away from there because I sanded it and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape here, or I mean, I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to caulk along here all the way across and the same thing down along here and then when I paint this back in here and this edge of this drywall are sealed off so water won't damage it and that's honestly going to be the hardest part is getting this taped so I can caulk so instead of just caulking using my finger and then coming back later and, and masking this off to paint I'm going to mask it off now because I'm a, the caulking I'm going to use has a one hour paint and my worry is if I caulk and then come back and try and tape that it's not going to be set up enough and I'm going to wind up getting it everywhere and getting my finger in it and everything else even though they say it's one hour paintable so I'm going to go through and put my tape just real close to the edge here, and then when I mat or when I caulk, a little bit will get on the tape, but I'm not going to worry about it because as soon as I get this caulked, we're going to spray this baby. All right, let's see. I can show you this. So you can see I got the tape down, and it's not perfectly where I want every spot, but it's close enough that it may not even touch the tape. So next thing I'm gonna do is use my paper masker here, mask everything off so that uh, when I spray this, I don't get paint everywhere. It's the first time using this, so we'll see how well that goes. I'm 
just getting it on my tape and not worry about getting it real close to the edge because that's what I got my other tape for. Tape it up to the door. Okay, we got it all taped off. Masked off, I guess. Papered off, whatever you want to say. And then this plastic here will come around and close this, close this gap here. Got down underneath there, right up over here. And then on this side, and again, this plastic here will come around fill this void here. So now it's caulk time. Got my ASTM uh, 920. This is a class 35. And I got my got my wet rag and we're ready to go. Alrighty, I'll show you here my tape off job in just a minute, but we're finally gonna get to paint something. And I'm gonna debut my brand new Fuji uh, HVLP uh, sprayer here to do this with. Now I'm not going to paint the whole house with that, but for this little bit here, I'm going to use this because it's not going to take a whole lot. And also with this HVLP sprayer, uh, I won't have as much overspray to worry about. Uh, I've got a big HEA Titan that I'm going to debut when I paint the whole house, but I didn't really want to set it up for this little bit, and uh, so. We're gonna open up the new Fuji. Now I got this off of Amazon and actually I got it through the warehouse and uh, got a really good deal on it. So this is the Fuji Mini Mike 5. And so it comes with uh, a whip hose. Uh, what's a whip hose? It's much more flexible so you don't get caught up with this stiff um, regular hose that they have, the thickness uh, meter cleaning kit. Filters. A gun. Some parts for the, some filter and gaskets for the gun. This is nice. It comes with a, uh, a paint gauge, if you will. Basically, you'll fill this up and count how long it takes for it to empty. And then you can ba base uh, your tip size on uh, the time that it took for that to go through. And last but not least, the sprayer itself. I got the Mini Mite 5 uh, Platinum because it is a five stage. It'll pump a lot of thicker paints. Uh, that and actually for everything you get in it, the whip hose, uh, the extra heavy duty. Uh, fittings here on the hose, uh, the main hose, and some of these other, uh, like the cleaning kit and that sort of stuff that comes in here. Uh, for the price I got this, it was cheaper to buy this than it was the three or the four and buy all this other extras. All right. I have to tell you, this is a little scary. It's the first time I'm doing all this. Sure, I got nothing on the bottom. This is a latex. Now it has settings on the back for like an airless sprayer, but not for an HVLP. The gun itself comes with a 1.3 and I've got a, uh, a 1.8, a 2, and a 2.5. Um, I'm probably gonna go up to the 2 because I really don't want to thin this a whole bunch. So. Uh, like I say, I'm probably going to put water in there and test that with the 1.3 that's in there, then I'll uh, put this other one in. All right, I got my paint in here, and I won't lie, I thinned it, and I was a little scared because it was just sitting with water on the top, but it mixed. And I got a piece of cardboard down here. I'm going to try some patterns first to make sure it works okay, and then uh, away we go. I like that. new 
to me and I hope you understand that I am not quite ready but I think that soon I am I know I like it this thing the way that you amaze me but I'm scared as hell this broken heart of mine is yours to keep it your All right, it's only been about oh, an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, and this is plenty dry because I actually took 150 sandpaper to it and smoothed all of it all out. So if I can take sandpaper to it, it's dry enough to paint. There we go, all done. Now I just gotta clean this mess up, take all this paper off and we'll see what kind of end result we have. I got it painted. Come on, let me show you how it looks. Looks pretty good. There's a couple areas in here where the caulking was over the tape too much and when I peeled it off it peeled the caulking but it'll be okay got nice sharp lines all along along the brick really like the brick I really got sharp good sharp lines along the brick yeah there's just a touch of white showing but I would rather that and I got it on the brick. Well, I'm really happy with the way this all turned out. And best of all, I got to use my three new toys. I mean, my new tools, of course. And I'll leave a link up here to the videos in the series on painting the house for you to look at. And when it comes to the HVLP sprayer, if you're thinking about buying it and on the fence because you think it might be too hard to use or too difficult, don't be. Go ahead and get it because coming from a person who can't spray with a spray can to save his life, it was actually fairly easy. I mean, once you figured out the spray pattern that you wanted, how wide and that, and how much product to pull out, to let out of the, out of the gun, it was actually fairly easy and turned out really well. Now, I ain't saying I'm gonna paint a car with it, but for what I'm using for it worked out really well. So if you're still watching the video at this point, I wanna thank you very, very much. It means a whole lot to me. And until the next video, happy DIYing.